Welcome back to Take Action News, everybody. David Schuster here, along with Daniel Marins and Rich Webster. Uh, in our election, of course, there were a couple of states that legalized marijuana, and there has been a discussion about marijuana and our culture and, and our laws for some time, but it has taken on a, an interesting twist because there's a new organization that has just started called SAM, or Smart Approaches to Marijuana. The group is headed by former U.S. Representative Patrick Kennedy, it includes uh, Kevin Sabin, who's a veteran of the Office of National Drug Control Policy under President Obama, and it now includes David Frum, former speechwriter for President George W. Bush, something of a conservative intellectual. And David Frum joins us now. David, welcome to Take Action News. Hey, thank you. Um, so, David, the group is opposed to marijuana legalization. How come? We're opposed to marijuana legalization because we don't want to encourage more use of marijuana. At the same time, we're trying to find a way um, not to put people in prison for casual use of marijuana. Um, I think those who belong to my generation, I think you're a half generation down, um, we grew up at a period when marijuana use was sharply declining. If you compare um, the, early, the early 1980s to the late 1970s, we saw big reductions in drug use. And a lot of people my age carry around an idea of marijuana as a former problem. But while most kinds of substance abuse are declining in the United States. Uh, marijuana use is going in the opposite direction. And so it's a real exception. And the trend is strongest among young people. And what is ominous is there's a lot of debate about the, the harm effects of the physical harms of marijuana. But I think there's a general consensus that if you start using a lot of marijuana early, before your brain is finished forming in your early 20s, it does seem to have a negative impact on the development of the brain. So it's really frightening if 14 and 15 and 16 year olds are using a lot of marijuana. I'll agree with you there, but there's also been a lot of evidence that the marijuana is not the gateway drug that a lot of people opposed to it have claimed in the past. Would you agree with that? Um, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, you know, there are a lot of, there's a lot of evidence that people use it simultaneously. But I, I, here's the part of it that, that I'm most worried about. I'm worried about the combination, not of marijuana with other drugs, but of marijuana in combination with economic depression. Um, we've had since 2007, now five years of very hard economic times. They bear heaviest on young people. We have tremendous youth unemployment. And even before 2007, things weren't so great. And I, I don't have, I can't back this up with you know, good studies, but I think it makes it intuitive sense that the rise we have seen in the use of marijuana over the past decade and half decade, among, especially among the youngest people, has something to do with the decline in economic opportunities for, for young people. And it's a very worrying one-two punch. David, how do you find that middle ground, though, between, uh, I mean, you're opposed to legalization, but you don't want law enforcement to be spending a lot of time on that. Where, where is the middle ground? How do you find it? Well, one of the, there's, uh, Kevin Sabat, who um, worked at National Drug Control Policy in the Obama administration, points to a program that he finds very exciting. It takes place in North Carolina. And what police there are trying to do is to avoid not only putting people in jail, but even arresting them, because you change people's attitude to the, to the law once you put a pair of handcuffs on them. Uh, and what the police do is they videotape people who are engaged in who either are seen in the open air smoking marijuana or buying and selling it. And then they go visit them, not not as an arrest, but with permission, knock on the door, may we come in and talk to you. And they show them the video and they say, look, we've got evidence that you know could get you into a lot of trouble. Uh, we've noticed you stopped going to class. Can we work with you on getting you back to class, uh, getting back into some kind of job job training, doing something to divert you from the legal system? 